Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Not long ago on this channel, I did a two part build series in which I put together this Mini ITX PC and that I used this power meter to measure its idle and at load power consumption. And since I made that video, I've had a lot of requests, a lot of communication saying, Chris, can you take the same power meter and measure the idle and at load power consumption of some other computers, including computers like a Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And so in this video, I'm going to grant your wish. So let's go power meter in hand and get started. Right. Just before we plug this thing in and go in search of some computers to test, I wanted to say a few words about what we're measuring in this video. And that is the total power use of a computer system from the mains outlet. And it's worth stressing this because many of us are used to using utilities such as open hardware monitor as you're seeing here, which do provide indications of the power use of, for example, a CPU. And that's very different to what we're measuring here, which is a total use of the whole system. And even if you had a piece of software which could monitor the power use of the CPU, the motherboard, the RAM, the drives, the fans in the system, all of that, it would still give you a lower figure than what we'll get from a meter like this because of losses in a power supply. Power supply is not entirely efficient. And so the amount of power going into a system to provide what's been drawn by the component is always going to be higher. And indeed, you might remember when we looked at the ASRock J4105 build and its power use a few videos back, we had a power use of two watts when we plugged in the adapter for the system, but before we turned the system on. And you're always gonna have issues there with the actual power supply itself taking a bit of power. It's worth bearing that in mind if you're looking at the figures in this video and you're thinking about powering a computer from batteries, you'll need a little bit less power than what we're monitoring here because of these losses of from in mains conversion down to, to DC voltages. It's also worth stressing I'm going to be plugging this into a computer and not also into its monitor, but you might want to know the power use of a monitor. And so earlier I plugged this in to the monitor I often use when making videos. It's a 24 inch BenQ monitor. And as you can see, it draws between about 22 and 24 watts. So that's pretty typical of a, a 24 inch monitor. And so there we are with all those providers indicated, let's uh, start building up a table of a uh, computer power use. And we'll start off using the figures from the ASRock build I've already mentioned. There, the idle power use of the system, the minimum idle power use was about eight watts, and the maximum power use of a J4105 system was up to 26 watts. So that gives us some figures to start off our table, the J4105 system having an idle power use of eight watts and a maximum power use of 26 watts. Right, here we are on the i7-6700T PC that I use to do all my computer graphics and to edit the videos on this channel. This is a PC with 32 gigabytes of RAM, a six terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive, a couple of SSDs and a GT1030 graphics card. And I've got the power meter connected, as you can see, it's idling along at about a 37, 38 watts, which is a pretty good. And we're in Lightwave, the package I make all my CG animation in. And I'm now going to uh, press F9 on this package to start it rendering out the shot. I don't know if you can recognize what shot it is. It's from the titles of this channel, but that will start to uh, stress out the processor, put it to its maximum power use. And as you can see, it's gone up to about 81, 82 watts, something like that. And it's worth pointing out that whilst this is quite a powerful PC, it is based on a low energy Intel processor, the 6700T, and that's quite deliberate. For the past 15 years or so, whenever I've built PCs for my own use, particularly for CG work and video editing, I've tried to make the system use as little power as possible, partially on environmental grounds, but also because a PC that uses as little power as possible generates as little heat as possible, and therefore is likely to have a longer life expectancy. So there we are, let's put the figures across onto our table, very different to what we saw for the AS Rock Silent PC build, and we'll move on in search of another computer. Right, our final desktop PC is going to be this one, the Ryzen 3 2200G system I built in a six part series on this channel about 18 months ago. 
and this has got eight gigabytes of RAM and SSD, and it was fitted in the later episodes of the series with a four gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti graphics card. And this PC is no longer in my possession, but I can report it's still in constant and very successful use. And I did record its power use at the end of the build process. And here you can see its maximum power drain, which peaks at about 153 watts. And then when we let it drop down to idle, it drops down to 39 watts, very similar to the 6700T system at idle, but much higher at load. And so let's put those figures onto the table again, and we've got some very different power consumption figures for desktop PCs. And I would note there are many desktop PCs which will use a lot more power than anything you can see here, but I don't own a PC of that type of specification, and given the state of the world in 2020, it's very difficult for me to get access to one to plug in a power meter. Right, I thought we'd now test out my ZenBook laptop, which I've got running on mains power connected to the mains adapter. And if we flick down here, you'll see I've got the thing fully charged. So in theory, we're measuring the power drain being used to run the machine and not also to charge the battery. And of course, in this test, we've also got a screen being measured as well as the computer system itself. And just to show you what the specification is of this laptop, laptops are of course all very different in terms of their specifications. This is an i5-7200U mobile CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's got a 512 gigabyte SSD. So if we bring up the power meter, you can see it's hovering along there at about five to six watts is its idle power consumption. That's a pretty good. I think we'll call that five watts. It seems to be five watts when I'm doing nothing on the screen. And down here, I've got Fusion from Blackmagic Design running. This is a compositing program, an effects program. This will really stress out the CPU when we render this sequence. So I'll hit a render and a start render, and we'll see, oh yes, the power use is going up considerably. It's up to 24 watts. That's uh, significant. Oh, the fan's also coming on in my laptop. It's getting warmer as it has to do more stuff. So there we are. We've got some more results for our table. We'll record five watts of idle for the ZenBook laptop and 25 watts as its maximum power use. Right, let's move on to some single board computers and we'll start with this one, a Raspberry Pi 4 four gigabyte model, which is a running here, a Raspberry Pi OS. And if we look at the power meter, you can see we're idling along at two watts. And I'd note here I'm using the official Raspberry Pi USB-C power adapter. So let's bring up a terminal where I'm going to run the script I often use for testing out temperatures on a Pi. This will stress out the Pi using Sysbench. If we just press enter on that, and we'll see processor use will go up and power use will go up straight away as well. But it's only gone up to uh, four watts. That's not bad, is it? We can see up here CPU utilization is 100%, but the Pi is still only drawing a four watts. How different that is to desktop computers. And before we put this onto a table, let's look at another Pi. We'll go to this one, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which again is idling along at about two watts. And again, we'll uh, run the uh, same script and push it up to maximum power drain, where it's now going up to, oh, a bit more actually, look, six watts. That's interesting, isn't it? I would say, again, this is using the official Raspberry Pi power supply for this uh, type of Pi, the one with a micro USB connector. Very interesting, more power drain. Settling down at about five watts there for the, the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. So let's look at a third Pi, which is going to be this, a Raspberry Pi 3A+. Plus. I really like this board, an underrated Pi in my opinion, the Raspberry Pi 3A+. Plus. And as you can see, it's got just one USB port into which I plugged in a dongle for a wireless mouse keyboard combination. And if we look at the power meter, we're registering a power use of just one watt here. It would be great to see decimals on this meter, but we don't have them. So we'll just have to say one watt at idle for the Raspberry Pi 3A+. And if we go to the operating system, here we are. This is actually Raspbian. I haven't updated to Raspberry Pi OS yet. Got the older desktop background. I do like that desktop background. Anyway, what we're doing here is measuring power, isn't it? So let's again run our test there to max it out. There we are, processor use going up. And all we've got up to, interestingly, five watts. So once we go to full processor utilization, the power benefits of using a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus clearly disappear. Anyway, 
Let's go to a fourth Pi, which is a Raspberry Pi 0W, the lowest power computer we're going to look at in this video. Here connected to the same dongle communicating with a keyboard mouse device. And here if we look at the power meter, again we see a power use of one watt or maybe less than that, maybe half a watt. As you can see, it's oscillating between zero and one. The power meter almost can't measure how little power the Raspberry Pi Zero W is using at idle. And if we go across to the operating system, you can see this is, was set up for doing my Raspberry Pi hamster feeder video a little while ago. But if we go through to uh, run up a terminal like that, we can again push the processor to a full utilization. And we'll see that, uh, oh, we're still seeing one watt on that uh, power meter. So really, it's a very small number. I would love to have decimals on this meter for this particular test. Answers on a postcard if you can guess what the actual figure is. Anyway, let's go to our fifth and final Pi, which will be this, the brand new Raspberry Pi 400, a keyboard encased Raspberry Pi 4 with a higher clock speed. Fantastic new board. And if we look at the power meter here, we see highly surprisingly two watt idle use, the same as we'd see for a Raspberry Pi 4, but it might use a bit more power when we go across to the desktop here and bring up the uh, test because it's got a higher frequency. So let's just uh, run the test, but uh, I imagine it won't be massively different to what we've seen. Five watts seems to be the result. Yes, that seems to be uh, pretty much as we would anticipate. So we've got loads of figures here to record on our table. Five pies worth of figures to add to our table and how different they are to the earlier figures we recorded for the different desktop PCs and my laptop. Greetings, here I am back again. and We're now going to look at five non-Raspberry Pi single board computers, starting with this one, the Odroid N2+. And if we look at the power meter, you'll see it's idling along at two watts. And indeed on the desktop, we can see here, it's definitely idling in the system monitor, very little CPU activity. But if I bring up a terminal where we've got a suspension command to stress out the processor, let's just uh, run that. And we can see the CPU cores have gone up to 100% utilization. And the power meter there is at what, four watts, five watts it's going up to on occasions. So I think we'll record five watts as the maximum load power to be drawn by the Odroid N2+. Plus. And with that, let's move on to another single board computer, which is going to be this one. This is the Rock Pi X. This is an x86 based board, an atom based board. And if we look at the power meter, it's drawing, oh look, two watts as an idle power consumption. This is getting repetitive, isn't it? This is deja vu all over again. But on the desktop, I have got running here in Linux Mint 20, a terminal, again, with a suspension command to stress out the CPU. So let's uh, run this and see what happens to power consumption. Oh, it's gone up to four watts. We're getting all oh, five watts. Yes, we'll record five watts again for the maximum power consumption on the, the Rock Pi X. And with this, I think we should move on to some more powerful SBCs. And in particular, we'll move on to this board, the Latte Panda Delta, a rather nice x86 based single board computer, quad core Celeron processor and four gigabytes of memory. And if we look at the power meter, you'll see it's idling along at three watts. We've found a board that uses more power as an SBC. And over on its desktop, you can see we're running Linux Mint 20 again. I've just booted it from the USB drive, but that's fine for our purposes here. I can run up a terminal and again execute the sysbench command to max out this board's CPU. So we'll do this. And what's going to be the maximum power use here? Oh, it's more than five watts. Look, it's more like nine watts. 8 watts, 9 watts, yes. The Latte Panda Delta clearly maxes out at about 9 watts under load. And so, let's move on to a penultimate computer, which is this one, the Odyssey X86 J4105, in its lovely blue aluminium case. And this is an SPC with the same processor, the Celeron J4105, as we had in our ASRock silent PC build way back at the, the start of the video. So we'll see how the results compare. And here, if we look at the power meter, you'll see our idle power use is five watts. It was eight watts on the other J4105 system. And if we look to a desktop, I've again just booted up Linux Mint from a USB drive. I've got the uh, system monitor running there so we can see CPU utilization. And of course, I've got the command here to stress things out. Let's run that. CPU use will hopefully leap up. It has, they've all gone to 100%. And 
or we're looking at 11 or 12 watts of power use, so more efficient than the ASRock board, I guess because of the other components on the board in addition to the processor. And with that, we'll move to our final board, the 14th computer in this video, which is this, the UDU Bolt, which is not technically an SBC because inside here is a small board with an embedded Ryzen processor, but socketed memory, 32 gigabytes of socketed memory. But I thought it would be nice to finish off our tests with the UDU. And if we look at the power meter, you'll see it's idling along at about 10 watts, 9 or 10 watts, I think 10 watts is it's a maximum idle power draw there. Again, I've booted into a Linux Mint. You can probably hear an incredibly loud fan, which has just come into play there inside the UDU Bolt. It's one downside of this board, an incredibly loud cooling fan. But uh, never mind, we'll bring up the system monitor here in a Linux Mint, again running from a USB drive and the terminal, and we'll uh, max out its uh, processor. See what happens to the power drain there as everything goes to 100% CPU utilization. Or we're up to about a 25 watts, so we're back into the larger power drawers, not the same as the big desktop PCs, but the reasonably high power draw. 25 watts for the UDU Bolt. And so let's put everything onto our table. You can see all the final results there, the different power drawers of the different desktop PCs, the laptop, and lots of different, very different single board computers. So if you ever wanted to know what are the different power drawers of different computing devices, then this hopefully provides you with some useful comparative data. Not that many years ago, very few people seemed to be that interested in the power use of a computer. But today this seems to have changed. A lot more people are taking an interest in PC power use and potential PC power use. And in that context, I hope you found this video useful. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.